It is stated in WHO that vaccinations decrease deaths by at least 3 to 5.5 million each year. Hi, I'm Dr. Raynalyn Arsen Andres. I'm a pediatric specialist from Makati Medical Center. Vaccines are important for children's health because me as a pediatrician, I consider vaccination as the best medical investment that you can give to your children. Why? Because of the longer term protection that the vaccine can offer. Vaccination it protects the children against many life-threatening infectious diseases, particularly diphtheria, tetanus, polio, measles, and other infectious diseases that can occur in children, particularly in less than five years of age. For the current vaccination guidelines in the Philippines, let us review first the expanded program on immunization, which was started on the year 1976. So the goal of the expanded program of immunization here in the Philippines is to at least prevent six of the most deadly infectious diseases that can occur in children, particularly TB, diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, hepatitis B, as well as measles. But on the year 2016, it was transitioned into a national immunization program. So in addition to the national immunization program, they included several age groups like the senior citizens, the school-aged children, and even the adolescents. So for the overall goal of the national immunization program, it, go it aims to reduce the mortality and morbidity among children particularly for these vaccine-preventable diseases. So for the specific goal, it aims to at least make Philippines polio-free. It aims to eliminate measles. It aims to eliminate maternal and neonatal tetanus. It aims to reduce the incidence of diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, hepatitis B, and rubella here in our country. And most importantly, tuberculosis is very common in the Philippines. So BCG is usually given in order for us to protect the children against the extrapulmonary tuberculosis. Vaccine effectiveness is defined as how a vaccine works as a whole in terms of protection of communities. It also is um, a measurement of how well a vaccine prevents an infection, asymptomatic illness, hospitalization, and even death. It is stated in WHO that vaccinations decrease deaths by at least 3 to 5.5 million each year. Okay? And here in the Philippines, over the past 35 years, since the EPI was started, there was a decline in these vaccine-preventable diseases. There are some circumstances wherein our child could not receive the vaccines. These contraindications are number one, if there is a severe allergy to the vaccine or any content of the vaccination. Number two, if the child is immunocompromised, meaning receiving chemotherapy or on high dose steroids for several months. Number three is that if the patient is pregnant, of course, teenage pregnancy happens in our country. So if the patient is pregnant, she cannot receive any live containing vaccines. And then any encephalopathy within the past seven days due to a pertussis containing vaccine is a contraindication. And then last but not the least, for rotavirus, you cannot give this to patients with severe combined immunodeficiency as well as intussusception. Vaccine hesitancy is defined by WHO as the refusal or delay in receiving vaccine even though the vaccine services are available. So we can summarize the possible sources of vaccine hesitancy in three things. You three C's actually. Number one is complacency because they do not perceive these vaccine-preventable diseases as something serious. Number two is that lack of confidence. Lack of confidence to the system, lack of confidence to the effectivity of the vaccine, lack of confidence to the safety of the vaccine. And then last but not the least is lack of convenience wherein there is problem in accessibility, language barrier, cultural, as well as religion differences. So what we can do for this, uh, what we can do for this Vaccine hesitancy is the number one in terms of approach. You have to approach the patient with a presumptive approach. So when you say presumptive approach, you assume that the patient will immunize. So you instead of asking them, what do you want to do with the vaccine? You tell the parents, Mommy, today, bibigyan po natin ng MMR vaccination si Sophia. Okay? Something like that. So you need to assume that they will receive the vaccination. Next is you have to give a strong recommendation. 
Because as clinicians, as pediatricians or healthcare providers, we are the number one source of trustworthy resources for them to read on, for them to know about these types of vaccinations. So, mommy, I strongly recommend na bigyan po natin siya ng vaccination na MMR kasi pineprevent po nito yung pagkakaroon ng pulmon niya, something like that. You need to convince them by using also a language that they would understand. Next is that you need to build trust to the patient's parents. You need to build trust by being listening, a listening ear. You need to understand them. You need to at least show them respect and empathy. So if ever that they are showing signs that they are hesitant, you need to have a welcoming voice to them. You need to be at least open-minded, ask open-ended questions. You need to let them speak. Next is that you need to tell stories aside from the scientific details because you know, Aside from the scientific journals that you present to the patients, it is important that you tell real stories of real people. How these vaccinations saved your patients, how your vaccinations affected the community. Next is that you need to address the pain because majority of the reason why kids do not want to get injection is because of the pain. So right now, we have what we call shot blockers wherein you can put it first here in the deltoid area or in the anterolateral area before injecting. So, because there's, um, there's a, an ongoing stimulus that's happening already, they cannot feel the pain anymore, okay? Or the pain is lessened. You can also try to do positions. Like if the patient is breastfeeding, you can try to ask the mom to breastfeed their child first if less than two years old. And then that's the time that you will give the vaccination. If the patient is less than a month old, you can do a skin-to-skin -skin contact because that will reduce the pain. And most importantly, you need to educate the parents regarding why you would want to give this vaccination to their child. You need to also educate them in terms of pain management and pain control at home. And also, you need to be honest with the side effects of the vaccinations, particularly if there is fever, if there is pain on the injection site or headache, you need to prepare them for what is coming. And most importantly, focus on the protection. You need to instill to the parents that you are giving these vaccines to protect their child, but not just their child, but the whole community because that's where the importance of herd immunity lies. You protect the whole community, you protect the most vulnerable of the population. Thank you.